Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Dreamwell, which is kind of a, an abstractish maze race game that's on Kickstarter right now, which I'm going to be doing a run through of so you can see what it's all about, and maybe decide to back. Now I've already got the game set up here as a two player game, and what we're going to be doing in this game, we are these cute little balloons. These represent us as small children dreaming, and we are trying to navigate this maze of the Dreamwell to find our friends. At the beginning of the game, each player gets two target cards that represent, well, I'm trying at the beginning of the game anyway, to find find Heart Girl and Seahorse Girl, and if I do find them, I will get points and also unlock special powers. And you can see there's more friends over here to find, and that's basically it. I'm going to be doing a run-through today of the basic game, not the advanced game, because the basic game gives you a, a fair bit to chew on. The advanced game, well, it really just kind of blows Jens in my head up, because the game can get really, really deep. But let's stop talking about it, and let's start traveling through the dream well. So, I am the first player, and on my turn, I choose one of three... No, I, I'm sorry. I do three actions, and there's several different things I can do. Um, the main things I'm going to do is move around from tile to tile and try to get into the positions that these target cards say. Like for instance, to find Seahorse Girl here, I need to have one of my balloons on Aurora... Or no, I'm sorry. Borealis the Bear. And I have to have another one on Little Hero. So, right. So if, if, I, if I maneuver such that my two balloons are like that, and also that one of them is on a tile that has the blue sea, which it is. You can see this one is on Borealis the Bear and on Blue Sea. So I've achieved the three goals of this. That means if I get them into these positions, I could play this card and have points to score at the end of the game and unlock a special power. So that's what we're trying to do. I get to do three actions. And let's see, what am I going to do? Now, what I could do is I could just try to maneuver in such a way that I move one onto the board, I move another onto the board, and then boom, I score. But I have to pay attention to what the special power is I'm going to unlock when I score. Like, for instance, once I find Heart Girl here, I will um, unlock a Pink Elephant. And what that means is it's as if I am all, I have already found Pink Elephant, which would help me find another friend later on. Or I'm standing on Pink Elephant, even if I'm not. And like I can see right here, another friend that I could try to find, which would give me three points if I find this one, requires me to be standing on Pink Elephant. So if I first find her, uh, Heart Girl, it's as if I've I'm standing on Pink Elephant, even if I'm not, which is going to make it easier to find that card. So I think, of my three actions, the first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to draw one of these cards. And another one comes out. I could, I could spend all my turns just drawing cards, although you have a maximum hand size of four. But anyway, so I've drawn one, and I'm going to spend my other two actions and try to get my characters into position so that I'll be able to claim this card, which will give me Pink Elephant, which will make it easier to find that card. So, uh, again, I need to be on Borealis the Bear, and I need to be on Little Hero, and it had to be this one and this one. But now, yeah, this is kind of a problem, because... The way these tiles work are, I mean, when you, when you set up the board, you, you put them out randomly, you also rotate them in random orientations as well. Because if I'm on this Borealis the Bear, these doors indicate the directions I can go. I can go this way or this way. And I can't go north or west or whatever. So if I want to get onto this tile, I look around, there's no door heading into it in any direction. So it's impossible to get to Borealis the Bear. Once I'm on Borealis the Bear, I've got three different ways that I could leave, but currently there's no ways to enter. So one of the things you can do with your turns is you can rotate any tile you want on the board provided um, it's empty or you are standing on it. So right now, I think the second action I need to do is I need to rotate a tile. So I will... <laughs> I will rotate this tile. There we go. And I could rotate it any number of directions. So that was my second action. Now my third action is, right now my guys are off the board. So, and they can enter the board um, basically onto any tile they want. So I'm going to enter onto this tile I just rotated. And now... Here's where the crux of the interesting stuff about the game is. Normally, you have to use one of your three actions to move one space. But if you move into a space that has a door in the direction you came from, you get to move again instantly for free. So like, actually, there's a better example of this. Like, say I were over here. I was on this Borealis Bear. And for my first action, I wanted to move. I could go this way because there's an exit door. Because I have come through into this tile via a door, that gives me a bonus movement for free. So as a second move, I could move this way. And because there's two doors connected, that gives me another bonus move. And then, well, at that point, um, 
Well, I can't go that way or that way. So, but you know, in one action, I could move two spaces. So a big part of the game is manipulating the maze so that you get it to where you can move through connected doors. Now, when you move on to the board, that same um, idea is true. If I move on to the if I move on to the board onto this tile, you can imagine I came through this doorway, which gives me a bonus move. I'm going to move on over here. And that gave me a bonus move. So I am now standing where I need to be standing on Borealis the Bear. Those are my three actions. I got another friend. I rotated a tile so I could get to Borealis. And then um, with one action, I did two moves to get to good old Borealis. Next turn, I'll get my other balloon on the board. And then I will be able to score a card. So that was my first turn. Now it is Jen's first turn. Let's see, I haven't even looked at what she wants. So she's trying to find Wolf Lady and uh, what's his name? Uh, Lucius, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, Lucius. And so what does she need to do? Well, uh, there's no commonality. Now, the nice thing is if you have multiple cards that have the same icon, so, you know, like if Jen had this card, then you know, she could get one of her balloons on Little Hero, and then that balloon could stay there, and she only has to focus on moving a different one around as an example. So she could start drawing some cards, or she could just try to actually find one of these two right now. Let's see, could we do that? Where does she need to be to get these two? She needs to be on Little Hero, Night Sky, and Borealis. So, and right. So there's a little hero night sky, and there's Borealis. So Jen could just go, you know what? Actually, yeah, would she want to do it? Yeah, each program for a move action for free? Hmm. Okay. That's pretty cool. What the heck? Yeah, Jen, she's just going to go on ahead and find Wolf Lady right here, which is going to score her one point at the end of the game. So she's got three actions. Her first action will be to move from off the board here on to Little Hero, but also Nighttime Sky. Then her second action will be to move off the board here onto Borealis the Bear. Although if Jen wanted to, she could move the same way I did and come over via the, the to, to get on this Borealis the Bear. But either way, whichever one she moves on to, her third action will be to score this card, which gives her one point and a special ability. As long as this is the most recent card she's scored, every turn she can get a move action for free. So it's like she gets to do four actions every turn instead of three. Now what she needs to be thinking about is, after she scores this, what's the next thing she's going to want to score? <laughs> um, let's see, I think probably this, because she already has a balloon on, on Little Hero on a black background. That's what this card needs too. So she might want to be chasing after scoring that one next. But in which case, she's going to want to leave this guy here and she's going to want to use this balloon to move around to find Skull. And, oh, and this card needs a Skull too. So she could get a really nice one, two, three chain of searches um, by you know leveraging Little Hero and then leveraging Skull. So that's actually pretty cool. So, um, so the next thing she's going to want to find is Skull. So I think that means she's going to want to be on this Borealis because from here she can move to Skull and she'll be able to find her next. So Jen has done one, two, and then her third action is going to be she's going to find Wolf Lady. And so she puts it up here face up. This is a reminder at the end of the game she's going to score one victory point. And as, lo and, and as long as she doesn't find another friend, this power of getting one free move every turn will be available. So... That was Jen's turn, and she's down to one friend to find. Now it's my turn, and I've still got three friends to find. And I'm going to find my first one. Right, so I already had Borealis. Now i got to get to Little Hero. And so I could easily move to this one or this one. Either one will, will succeed at what I want, but I need to think about um, where am I going to go next. Let's see. Well, because I will have discovered Pink Elephant, the next thing I'm going to try to go after is this guy, because I'll have Pink Elephant. I'll want the uh, skull flower. So, how will I be able to get to skull flower? Ah, not particularly good, because this, if I come over to this little hero, there's a skull flower. Oh, actually, yeah. So I'll come to this little hero. So that was my first action. I moved here. And my second action will be to find heart girl, because again, I've got Borealis. I mean, I'm sorry, I've got Borealis and Pink Sky and Little Hero. So I've just scored two points. And now I want to try and find Heart Girl more often because every time I do, it's worth two bonus points. So I want to leverage this as much as possible. But in the meantime, um, no matter where I am on the board, I can consider myself having found Pink Elephant. And so now for my third action, well, I want to get in position so that I'll be able to find this friend. So I need, I'm already at Pink Elephant here. I need to get to Skull. And I also need to be cave, and that's what this skull is. So my third action, I'm going to move, and I'll move once. Oh, oh shoot! Crap! 
I could move, but I can only go one space because I can't string a series of moves here because this swan doesn't have an entrance door. So it's only one space. Drat. So the maze is not really working out for me that well. Well, but anyway, so I'll come over there. Next turn, I'll be able to move over here to Skull. And, um, yeah. All right. But anyway, so there I am. So that was my turn. And now it's Jen's turn again. And she's got one friend left to find. But remember, the first thing she's going to do, she's going to cheat. I want to be able to find this friend as well. That's her first action. And now for her, let's see, and why did she want it? Because, right, so she's already got this. She just needs to get to Skull now. And to do it, she um, needs to get to either Skull. And, uh, and right, as Jen just pointed out, don't forget, she gets a free, um, one free move every turn. But she doesn't really need it right now because her first thing was she drew a card. Her second thing was she's just going to move right here. So she hasn't used her free action at all. And now her third thing is she can find this friend because she's got Black Sky, Skull, and Borealis. And this is going to let her immediately pick up and move, if she wants to, one of her balloons to um, Whale. Hmm. Now then, let's see. Now that's interesting. So she could score right now, but you know what I think she's going to do? She's going to wait. She's going to grab this card because if soon she scores it, she'll move to whale. This card needs whale, so she'll be able to teleport right to that and have this thing halfway done as well. Plus, when she scores this card, she's going to get one point. Plus one point for every sky background. Here's another sky background. So this is a good card for her for two different reasons. So those were Jen's three turns. All righty, and now it's back to my turn. And finally, my first action is I will move over here. And unfortunately, now I could get bonus movement out of this because I, I left a door and I entered a door, but I'm just going to stop right there because that's what I needed. And now finally, I am going to score my second card because I am in Green Cave, I've got Skull, and I've got Pink Elephant, and boom. Uh, now I have made five points total, and I can immediately move one of my balloons to a little hero of my choice which is cool um, because, well, I'm on Little Hero right now, but to be able to score this, I need Borealis and Little Hero. Let's see here. And, uh, and a blue background. So, if I, all right, which means, hmm, drat. None of these things are, oh, wait, no, this is Jen. This is me over here, right. So actually, I'm already on Borealis, but it's a pink background. I need a blue background. So I really need to be on this Borealis. But I also need to be on a little hero. So I'm going to take this and I, you know, because I, I just found this guy, my bonus action is I get to move over here and now this is half done. Next turn I get on Borealis and a, and a sky background and I'll be able to score this. So that was my turn. Now it is Jen's turn again and I've already forgotten what it was she was doing. Right. Okay. She, um, right. So she's finally scoring this now. Her, that's her second friend she's found because they're both in the right place. And now she can immediately move to a pink whale. And so she needs to be on nighttime. Or she needs to be on a nighttime tile, on a pink whale tile, and also on, what's his name? Um, Umi Bozu. That's his, that's his character's name, Umi Bozu. So what's going to be the best way for her to do that? Uh, let's see. <laughs> there, both pink whales are up there. So she can move to either pink whale. And so the other one's going to have to be down here to Omibozo. So she'll move up here to this pink whale. And that was a free action. So her first thing was she found, and she got a free movement out of it. And, now th and this is done. Her special power is done. Now for her second move, she will move here, following this doorway, to get onto Umi... Oh, that was it. Again. Uh, Umibozu and a nighttime sky. And then for her third action, boom. She's got whale. She's got uh, Umibozu and night sky. Jen just scored her third friend. And like I said, this is a race to seven friends. And um, now, uh, because Jen has just found this, it's as if she has found a little hero, which means on her next turn, she might want to grab this card because she's halfway towards completing this one already. So anyway, that was Jen's turn. Now it is my turn again. I'm down to one card in my hand. And uh, let's see here. Um, and I'm already on Little Hero. I am, I'm, I'm on Borealis, but it's the wrong Borealis because I need to be on Borealis with the background. So my first action is I will move here. And hey, I am on. I'm, I, my second action is I'll score this. And my third action is, well, I'm out of cards. So I think my third action is I'm going to draw a new card. Now, bearing in mind the fact that because I've just scored this, it's as if I've already found a pink sky, I should look. I probably want this one because this is already pink sky. Although I'm not really fulfilling either of these two, but it's worth three points as well. 
But if I can, what I really want to do is find more Heart Girl or Seahorse Girls because I get bonus points for every time I find one of those. And currently I haven't found any. Hmm. So, do I take this? Or do I take a t uh, one of these based on where I already am? I'm already on Borealis and Little Hero, which means I'm halfway towards this. Right, so I might want to grab that one because I'm on Little Hero. And so this, if I take this one, all I need to do is get a Black Swan, which... Let's see, there's one... Well, I don't want... I can't get to that one because I can't leave this, but I could. I just need to move over here to get to that Black Swan and I could complete this. And it gives me... Oh, this gives me points for every um, uh, green cave I've got, and I've already got one. So that's pretty nice. I think I'll grab that as my... Oh shoot, I've lost track of how many actions I've done. Darn it. Uh, now, of course, it's not, it's not too hard to keep track of what you're actually doing when you're only thinking about yourself. And when you're thinking about both players and actually trying to film and whatnot, I got, got a little carried away here. Right. Hmm. Well, I know I'm going to take this, and you know what? I think I'm going to stop right there because you know I've kind of given you a basics of how this game works. You're moving around, you're manipulating the maze, you're trying to get like multiple step moves, and we're racing to be the first to trigger the end of the game by finding seven friends. Now, if you want, you can go on ahead and hit the I up in the top right corner of the screen, or follow the show notes, and I'll keep playing a few more rounds. Uh, heck, maybe I'll even finish this game. I'm not really quite sure. Or you know what? Actually, I think if you hit the extended, I will reset up the board. And I will play, I'll show you how the advanced game works because you know, I'm scared to do it because I still haven't quite mastered this game. There's a lot of tricks just with the basic, but I'll show you how the advanced works where in addition to being able to rotate tiles and move around on tiles, we also flip tiles. And so we find stuff on the other side and we end up introducing all these additional black border cards to the game. So if you want to see a little bit of the advanced game, hit the I or follow the show notes, go to the extended playthrough or go to final thoughts. Your choice in five... Four, three, two, one.